Hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today I want to talk to you about the new revised core set for the Lord of the Rings, the card game. This is a living card game that has come out at least twice before, and the reason I know that is because I've owned this game twice before, and so I decided to pick it up again, though I did get a ding and dent version of it. Uh, I figured, you know, I'd caught my cut my costs a little bit for the third time. You might see a little damage on the cover here. Not a big deal to me. Uh, but this is now, again, the third time I'm having a go at this game. And the question then arises, is it sticking now? Does it seem like something I'm going to be hanging on to this time while I finally get over that hill and find this to be an enjoyable game that keeps coming back to the table? And we're going to get around to that and why I think that that question is answered one way or the other. Before we do that, though, I'm going to go ahead and show you what comes inside this core box, all right? And I'm going to be telling you a little bit about the differences, in case you are familiar with some of the previous releases of this, what the differences are. Then we'll come back up here, and I'll tell you a little bit more about my thoughts on this at the moment. So here we're going to take a look at all the components that come in this new edition, and when appropriate, I'll point out the differences from the previous printings of the game. So first and foremost, over here we've got four of these threat dials for the players. Previous printings of the game came with only two, and if you wanted to play three or four players, you'd have to buy another core box to have enough of, uh, of these so that you could have one per player. Never mind that you needed the cards, of course, to build enough uh, decks for that many players as well. Start player token over here. You've got the three kinds of tokens, your progress tokens over here. These are going to be your resources and then your wounds. Mine, of course, are in these little plastic containers that do not come in the box. But you're going to have those. And then we've also got new denominations here for threes and fives in all three kinds of tokens. Uh, and those were not in the previous printings. Everything, everything was a, a singleton in the previous printings of the game. All right. We're going to have our Learn to Play book and our Rules Reference here, both fairly hefty books. Uh, this one, for example, has 33 pages here, I think. There might be more than that. 35 pages, that is. So there we go, the two books, and then we've got cards. So the game comes with three scenarios. These are the same ones that were in any previous printing of the core box. We've got Passage Through Mirkwood here, uh, Journey Along the Anduin, and then Escape from... Uh, Dogodur. So these three are the same three, same cards for all of that. No difference there. We've got player cards, these cards, and I've also got two made decks already here. And again, these are all the cards that come in the core box. Two decks, as well as all of this, which would let me modify those decks or make new ones. One neat thing that is included in this rule book, which is where these decks come from, is that there is now, besides the introductory decks that they tell you to begin with, which aren't really decks uh, per se, they're, they're basically telling you here whenever you're doing the player starter deck, to just take all the cards from the sphere you want to play and put them together into a deck. So for example, if you want to build a spirit deck here, which is one of the four spheres, you just grab every copy of the cards in that color, in that kind, and then a two cards of uh, two copies of card 73, which is a generic card. It doesn't have a sphere. It's Gandalf. He can go into any deck. Those are not particularly good, but the good thing they did include is if you go to page 27 in here, then they give you two pre-built decks here. You can build right out of the core box, both of these. And these are much better. Each one includes two spheres, and they are put together very well. That's what these two are. They work tremendously, so if you don't want to mess with deck building, you really don't have to for a while. You do not need to look up a deck list online. You can build these two, and they are solid, very uh, complementary as well. Uh, if you're playing a single player, I would recommend this one here. If you're playing two players, then both of these together are really going to do a good job of letting you get through these uh, three stories, the three quests you're going on. 
You're going to have a nice box with a nice insert. So as you can see here, there's a plastic insert in here with a, a few different wells. This is going to work out very nicely. Um, the previous editions all hard, had sort of a cardboard insert which was not particularly usable, sort of that, uh, you know, the, the channel or just something in there you were probably going to get rid of pretty quickly. So this is something you can certainly keep and utilize. And then the last thing I want to point out are these cards here. This is a brand new deck of cards, which are not in any previous printing of the game, but you can go on Fantasy Flight's website and print these out. Not ideal, I would say, but it's they're, they're making them available, so that's something. So these allow you to play campaign mode. To play campaign mode, you're going to be using this card right here. The first one is for passage through Mirkwood, the first of the three uh, stories in the box. You would put this into play, you would follow any further setup instructions, uh, and then you play the game as normal. You will gain, at the end of the game, as it tells you on the back of this one, you're going to gain some boons and some burdens. So some good cards or, or some bad cards. And then you go into the next one with those things carrying over through the three chapters included in here, okay? A uh, couple of things I like and don't like about this mode. I like the idea of them linking together and making the game a little bit easier generally. Especially if you're playing solitaire, I think this makes the game a little bit easier. The one thing I don't like is if a character, one of your heroes, I should say, dies, uh, you know, completely has, uh, is wounded and, and has to be removed from the game, at the end of the game, if that character is out, then you would go on to the next story, the next part of the campaign mode here, without that character, which is possibly going to require you to change the composition of your deck. I don't love that. They have a, a penalty, which uh, is starting with more threat, if you take wounds or if somebody perishes, uh, so forth. But I, I don't like the idea of them forcing you to deck build. I would rather just take a bigger penalty and be allowed to imagine that that character isn't dead, they merely took severe wounds, and I'll have to go into my next game with a penalty over here in the threat dial, just so that the story can move along, just so that we don't have to stop and be forced to possibly deck build if it's not something you are interested in doing right now. But I think this is a good idea. I think they work well. Like I said, they string together the story, giving you new um, allies, giving you new boons and burdens, like I said, some good cards, some bad cards that come in here that might be shuffled into the uh, decks and come up against you. And then just some really interesting cheap cards in there that might get shuffled into your deck, modify it without you having to do anything else. That I'm okay with. Being forced to deck build because one of your characters died, uh, I'm, I'm not a, as big a fan of that one. And in fact, I might just house rule that, that you keep the person and just take some more threat hit at the beginning of the game when you're setting up. So there you go, that is everything that you're going to get in the box and all the things that are different from the uh, original or previous two printings of the game. So a few differences there, and like I said, the game has come out twice before. So the first time I owned this game, it was in a large format box. It is the size of a uh, you know, Ticket to Ride or something like that. Big square box, largely empty box. Uh, that had fewer components than what you get in here now. I had that, I tried it, I sort of beat my head against it for a while, eventually let that game go. The game was re-released in a smaller format when uh, living card games moved down to a, a smaller package as their core box. And I picked it up again, probably on sale somewhere, but I did, and tried it again. Even got a few expansions that time, messed with it a bit, and eventually I let that one go. It didn't quite click for me still. Um, and now that it has been re-released, I decided to pick it up again. And you know what? I've been having a lot of fun with it. It's uh, It's been a very enjoyable experience. I'm enjoying deck building in the game, or deck customizing, really. I uh, haven't messed too much with building a deck from scratch. But I've been having a great time with it. 
I even picked up the uh, first cycle that has been repackaged in the new format that they're coming out with, and that is this one right here, Angmar Awakened. This is na this now comes uh, all in one box in a box this size with an insert as well. How about that? So you can keep cards in there without needing a, a solution for your storage. So it seems like the game now is clicking for me finally. I am happy with it. I'm enjoying my plays of it. And the question arises then, why now third time uh, up to bat am I enjoying this game finally and seems to be something I'll be hanging on to and exploring and having a good time with. So let's go ahead and talk about that, all right? Starting from what I think is the most obvious answer to that, and that is that this is simply a better core box that has ever come out before for this game. Uh, you are going to get uh, sort of the best of both worlds. Large box that you can store cards in, and it comes with a plastic insert, which the original big box did not. Uh, as far as I remember, it's been quite a while. But it also has then a full playset. More cards in there. This is one to four players out of the box, which is not a big deal to me, seeing as to how I don't really want to play with more than two players. I think it's a fantastic two-player game. Then Solo would follow that. And three and four, I just probably won't play with that many. But I think uh, you're getting a lot of content in here, right? So it's the best core box with the best rule book they've put out yet in this you know, two-book format, as you saw there. The, uh, it's the clearest rule book they've come out with in uh, overall uh, printings of this. Those deck lists that show up near the back of the Learn to Play guide, I think, are excellent. Definitely something that uh, is going to ease people into the game. I still don't think the starting recommended decks are a good idea. Just taking everything of one sphere, one color, shuffling all that up and playing the game. If you absolutely must learn with a single sphere and that's the easiest path to entry, sure. Just don't judge the game based on that. Um, definitely very quickly move on to those pre-built decks near the back of the rulebook. I think um, there's also something to be said for me having a better grasp on this game at this point. There are more resources available out there. Other channels on YouTube that are talking about this game and have a lot of history with the game. Websites that are going to give you a lot of resources. And just for me personally... A better grasp, a better understanding of what makes a, a good deck versus a bad deck. What I need to be concerned with. There were a few things when I first played this game. And this is pre-Arkham Horror, the card game, by the way. The sort of spiritual successor to this. I understood some things. I understood uh, you know, resource management. I understood the idea of not putting too many expensive cards in your deck. Because you can't play them, that sort of thing. What I feel I did not have a good grasp on was the amount of allies you need to have in your deck versus attachments or events. The sort of, again, what makes a good deck in all of its aspects. And now I feel like I have a much better grasp on that. And I think part of that is experience with the successors to this game. I've played a lot of Arkham Horror Living Card Game. I've played a lot of Marvel Champions. Those both are sort of evolutions on this, the granddaddy of those games. And going back to it now, I feel like I have more experience uh, just by association with this game. I understand it better. I, I can spot the things I'm looking for. I can just manipulate the system to do what I want it to do a little more cleanly. I'm also a big fan of the new release format, and I think that's a positive that's going to help this game stick around for me personally. I really like the new format in which they're releasing, well, most of their living card games. Uh, certainly this one's doing it, but Arkham Horror, the living card game, has also switched to this idea of releasing a campaign in one box, as opposed to forcing you to chase down small packs released monthly. And so you can pick this up, you can pick up the one that has all of the hero cards, all of your good guy cards. Uh, you can pick up both, you can pick up either one. The story though, the, uh, the quests are going to be in this box here. 
and it's nice to be able to pick up that much content at once and feel like you're not missing anything, like you have to stay on the hunt for these packs. Um, which is, in some ways, distracting and can be deflating if one of them happens to be currently between prints and you just can't find it. You're mis missing a, a piece of your arc. So I really like that. Another thing I think is a very good idea, and again, just a, a nicer way to jump onto the game, are the new starter decks. I picked up a couple of these. I picked up uh, the, uh, the Riders of Rohan deck and the Dwarves of Durin deck. So two pre-built decks that you can get these, you can crack this open, shuffle up the cards, and play. You do not need to worry about, am I a good deck builder? Am I putting in the right proportions, the, the right amount of characters, of allies, to attachments, to events? Which heroes should I be using? This is a fantastic way to jump into the game and uh, not do any of the pre-production that is required to enjoy something like this. And then you have that deck that you can modify. In fact, they even give you cards in that deck, in that package, that aren't part of your deck that you can use to modify that deck. And I find that infinitely easier to do, to modify a pre-built deck versus building one from absolute scratch, right? Something that Marvel Champions has now learned a lot of people find uh, difficult to get into. Hence why Marvel Champions will sell you a pack, a hero pack, that is pre-built, and a lot of people who are very into the game immediately tear that apart and build themselves a new deck using that hero, and some people are happy to play with the way it came out of the box forever. This one, you didn't really have that option before. This is the first product of this kind for this line. And I think that's fantastic. Another lesson they learned because they did something recently, uh, kind of recently, uh, in the same vein for Arkham Horror, the card game. So that's a neat idea. Um, and again, I think this is ultimately then, if you've never played The Lord of the Rings, the card game, I think now is a fantastic moment in which to jump into this. This is a great starting box play through this for a while, you're going to enjoy it. Uh, there's only three quests, but they're certainly replayable. And then getting the Angmar Awakened box is going to give you a lot more content. Uh, so that's what I'm thinking. Now, things I don't like about this one, not enough to have me cycle this game out yet a third time, but things that I'm finding I could take or leave. The campaign idea is an interesting idea, certainly one that they are taking from, you know, Arkham Horror LCG is very popular, and they, they've sort of done this before. This is not a brand new concept to a strung together story for this game, but to this degree, it is. You now have those campaign cards, you have boons and burdens you can unlock as you are playing through the three stories that come in here. And I think that's okay. I don't think this game can touch Arkham Horror LCG when it comes to a story, a connected, you know, tale that is being told through various chapters. It does make the game in some ways easier and more dynamic, and it makes uh, solitaire play a little bit easier, certainly, uh, which I think is good. I think if you're playing mostly solo, you're going to enjoy those boons and burdens. But I also don't like a couple of the things that it forces players to do, which I already talked about in the overview of the product here on the table. Yeah, having a character die and having to then possibly mess your deck up and having to shuffle it around, not a big fan of that. But again, I guess I'll change, you know, how I tackle it and do my own thing, right? So ultimately, I think this is a very good product. I really like it. Um, it's one that I would certainly recommend, especially if it's one you've overlooked, you jumped on to these cooperative living card games after this one was sort of off your radar, and maybe you are a Marvel Champions player. Maybe that's been the one you've played. If you're a Lord of the Rings fan, and you like that idea, I think you're going to like this game as well. This is a very solid product, well put together, good rule books, good reference guide, a nice amount of cards so you can build whatever deck you want to, and a nice support system that already has different categories of products all well put together and a little easier to get into. 
So there you go, everybody. Those are my thoughts on my third go around at the Lord of the Rings, the card game. Hopefully uh, this is useful to you to give you some ideas of maybe if it's something you want to try or retry if you, you know, didn't quite get into it before. So that's going to do it for me. Thanks very much for hanging out with me and listening. My name is Z Garcia. I'm going to see you on the next one.